And how's it sneaking my perfect voice boxed American accent friends, whether you're from America, a certain region of the country, whether you're from any other country in the world on this beautiful planet that we call home. All of us already have a perfect accent, no matter what your accent is. But if you want to learn the most generic, quintessentially American radio voiced newscaster type accent, that's what we practice here on this channel. That's what we try to get better at because who cares? Why not? Let's do it. So what can be confusing if you are someone learning to have a perfect American accent is how to make questions sound like questions and how to make non-questions sound like non-questions. This can be quite tricky. So what is the first thing people talk about? It is the upward inflection. The upward inflection, where at the very end the voice goes up, like it's a question. This is often criticized because of the fact that in the so-called valley girl uh, and other dialects, like, um, like, oh my god, I can't believe you're doing that. Are you really going to do that? Is that going to happen? Etc. This is something that is stereotyped to happen a lot. But what's interesting is the kind of upward inflection that is often a part of a regional stereotype or a regional dialect of American English or is simply a part of a person's mannerisms or speech patterns for them individually. In either event, this inflection, this upward inflection, often sounds different than when someone is having an upward inflection for a question. It can, it, it, so it comes across as simply more uncertain, more insecure, but it doesn't usually make it sound like a question. Not really. So if I ask you a question, how are you today? It doesn't always actually inflect upward. And a big part of our intonation going upward at the end to show it's a question will have to do with word order. You see, with English, and including American English, of course, we have auxiliary verbs, auxiliary verbs, these fun helping verbs. If someone says, I will help you, then the will is an auxiliary verb. I, I, for all my teaching of speaking and phonetics, I'm having trouble with auxiliary. It's a helping verb. A helping verb helps the main verb. I am working right now. In this case, the verb to be am is acting as an auxiliary verb, a helping verb for working. I am working right now. I will be there. I will be there. In this case, will is the helping verb, auxiliary verb. And be, the verb to be, is the main verb. So, why does this matter? It matters because in English, to show something as a question, you can move around the auxiliary verb and the main verb, depending on the sentence, um... The panda sleeps at night, for example. Uh, the panda does sleep at night. If you make it into a question, you move that helping verb to the beginning. Does the panda sleep at night? Suddenly it's a question. The panda does sleep at night. Does is the auxiliary verb. And sleep is the verb. You move that to the beginning. That do, that does, it's a form of do do as a helping verb, then suddenly you make it clear it's a question. If your word order makes it clear that it's a question, by putting the helping verb, the sidekick verb, at the beginning of the sentence, then you don't need as much questioning inflection. Because it feels redundant, it feels overkill, it feels superfluous. It feels extra. Are you having a great day? This is worded in a way that it can only be a question. Whereas if we say, you are having a great day, that's a statement. But here's the thing. 
you can make any statement into a question by adding a question mark to it if you're writing it and then simply having an upward inflection. You are having a great day. Now, this is where we need the upward inflection. This is where we need to go up at the end. But unlike that valley girl stereotype, we don't kind of make the whole second half of the sentence start flying upward. Instead, what we do is we really focus on that final word, the final emphasized syllable of the final word. You are having a great day. Day? Day? Ah, it squeaks a little, doesn't it? That's really the only one we need to go upward on. Otherwise, it's a statement. You are having a great day. I can read your mind. I know that you're having a great day. And I'm glad you are. I want you to. So if your question, if, you're, if it's worded the same way that it could also be a statement, then you need to emphasize the last word by raising it to the highest pitch within your current octave. And all of our octaves, our baseline can change depending on my mood. If I've woken up recently, my octave can be much more relaxed and much more far down low down here. Or if I'm very excited, then my octave can be much more high up here and around this baseline or whatever. But whatever your current octave, the range of pitch that you're occupying within the sentences and paragraphs that you're saying. And if you're like me, it can fluctuate a lot. You want to make it so that that final word is at the highest pitch within that range. If you're saying a question where the wording makes it so that it could also be a statement without punctuation on the page or the upward inflection. That upward inflection with the final word is your question mark. And you don't need this if it's worded in a way that it could only be a question. Does the panda sleep at night? Does the panda sleep at night? Does the panda sleep at night? These are all obviously a question, no matter how I do the tone. Thanks so much for checking in. Check in with us next time. Be sure to like and subscribe if you're into that sort of thing. And we'll talk more about the perfect American accents in the next video.